Hello ladies and gents, my name is not Peridium, but we'll be talking about Big Brother anyways. Specifically, blindsides. Some blindsides are great because of the reaction the evicted house guests give. Some are great for the turmoil that erupts from that rest of the house afterwards. But one thing's for certain, blindsides are awesome. Today, I'll primarily be looking solely around evictions. While many times blindsides occur at the nominations or the veto meeting, my personal favorites are watching the evicted house guest caught totally off guard and then having to go out onto the stage with Julie, try to make sense of the situation. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. I'll firstly be discussing some blindsides through the ages of Big Brother before then going into my top five of all time. To start things off, let's talk about these blindsides that didn't make the cut, but were still great in their own ways. We start off Big Brother 7 with Janelle blindsiding Will at the final four of All-Stars. Honestly, this seemed to be more of a blindside to Boogie as Will sensed it was coming prior to the eviction, but definitely one of the most famous examples of a blindside. I thought he owned Janelle and Erica seemed resigned to be going home, but the girls just did an excellent job of acting and uh, I just, it totally, I'm totally flabbergasted. Fast forward to Big Brother 13, we enter the double eviction at the final seven. With Jeff and Rachel on the block, Jeff should have had the votes to stay with only four people voting as he had Jordan, Adam, and Shelly on lock. But as we saw, Shelly was ready to make her move, causing a tie vote with Kalia, the HOH breaking in in favor of Rachel, leaving Jeff with nothing but an interview with Julie. One that just missed making my list was Andy blindsiding Amanda, McCray, and Alyssa without them even knowing it was him. Similar to what we just talked about, we're at the final seven of Big Brother 15, which had Amanda and Spencer on the block. Amanda had her showmance with McRae, along with her ally Andy, locked in for two votes, and she managed to convince her longtime enemy Alyssa to vote with her, resulting in a three to one vote where Spencer should go home. Except, Andy was a little sneaky boy who was working with everyone in the house and created a plan to blindside Amanda, get her evicted, then pin the vote on Alyssa. It worked flawlessly. The vote was revealed to be 2-2, two to two. Jean Marie casted the sole vote to evict Amanda, and she was blindsided hard. And then, Andy masterfully lied to McRae and Alyssa, fooling them into pointing fingers at one another and all over the place. McRae won the next HOH during this double eviction, and Andy capitalized on his confusion and got him to take out Alyssa before she could convince him that she was telling the truth. Also, Nick getting blindsided in the beginning of the season was awesome for the aftermath of Gina Marie yelling at everyone across the house while getting tips on what to say in the kitchen. Good stuff. And you see the attitude, so bring it. You'll hear me too, go hide in your little rooms like freaking cockroaches that you are. Nobody's hiding. Moving on, we got Bronte getting blindsided in Big Brother 18 while sitting next to Tiffany. It was nice to see, although it ended up in vain as Tiffany ended up going home the following week anyways. The next season, Big Brother 19, had a couple fun blindsides to watch. Jillian was told she was safe week one before Paul banded together their minions and flipped the script, and Cody's reaction to Jillian's blindside is pretty great. Later on in the season, we got to watch Jason to get blindsided in yet another final 7 2 2 tie vote, and seeing Jason storm out of the house, pushing Alex away as he thought he betrayed her, was a fun thing to watch from home, knowing that so many people were out of the loop and clueless as to what just happened. Next season, in Big Brother 20, we got so many blindsides, but some good ones were Steve leaving week one, leaving half the house blindsided, Swaggy leaving week two, having half the house blindsided, Razor leaving week three, leaving half the house blindsided. You get the point. My favorite of those three is probably the Rachel one, just because of Rachel's interview with Julie afterwards. Probably one of the most angry and betrayed I've seen a player after being blindsided. We'll talk about the other BB20 pre-merge blindside in a little bit, though. What the frick? What? Please don't curse. Please don't curse. Thinking. What's wrong with Angela? <laughs> We've got an HOH competition to get started. Well, I hope <laughs> level six doesn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Nor Screw them. You. The last blindside I'll talk about before my ranking list is in Big Brother 21 during week three. Cliff and Nicole were on the block after Nick won HOH, and Nicole was looking to be headed home. But Nick's alliance was ready to turn on him and saw it more beneficial to send home Cliff. Obviously, they didn't tell Nick and Bella this, though. Typically, when we get a blind side, the surviving player on the block is usually aware that they're safe and the person sitting next to them is the one out of the loop. But this blind side is unique in the sense that both Cliff and Nicole were blindsided by the vote. Nicole thought she was going home, and so did Cliff. So when the vote came back 6-4 to four with Cliff getting evicted, it was a blind side for the both of them. What makes things even better is that Cliff then immediately won the battle back competition, and then the following HOH being a huge slap in the face to all the house guests that just blindsided him. Okay, now that we quickly just went over those, we can get into my top five. Well, it was going to be a top five, but I wanted to talk more in depth about a couple more, so it's actually a top seven. 
At the number seven spot, we have Dustin getting blindsided in Big Brother 8 after Eric had to try and flip the vote in week six. Jessica won the HOH and was ready to target the Donatos for real, nominating both Dick and Danielle for eviction. Dick pulled through winning the veto competition and with no hesitation uses the veto to save Danielle. Dustin, who is so ready to see the Donatos leave, volunteered himself to be the pawn next to Dick to make it that much more satisfying for him when Dick gets evicted. Little did he know, America loved Dick. It was able to... <laughs> America loved Dick and was able to force Eric's hand when it came to how he played. Therefore, Eric had to try and flip the script and get Dustin evicted. After working the numbers, he successfully convinced enough people to get it to be a 4-2 to two vote to evict Dustin, who literally just volunteered to be a pawn. Watching Julie reveal the vote and seeing Dustin's jaw drop was just a bunch of chef's kisses. Remember kids, never volunteer to go on the block, ever. You have all three of us, so even if, you know, if some fiasco happens, she still breaks the ties, it doesn't mm -hmm. even matter. Mm -hmm. There is something to be said mm -hmm. about- Dustin, I nominate you. <laughs> hey, Jessica. And with that, Dustin joining me on the block. Very happy day. Dustin, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. At the number six spot, I have the last BB20 pre-Jerry blindside we've yet to talk about. The week three Winston blindside. Coming into the vote, the Fauté side of the house was keen on voting out Brett and were confident they had the numbers to do so. Little did they know though that level six was there to shake things up. So Tyler, Angela, Casey, and Rachel were able to bring in JC and Sam to vote out Winston, unbeknownst to the other side of the house and Winston. Come eviction time, Brett makes a speech that Rockstar is going to flip her vote to keep Brett and that you better watch out for her when the vote flips and Brett stays. Sure enough, the vote count is revealed and Winston is blindsided by a vote of 6-5. to five. He hugs Brett goodbye and ignores every other person storming out of the house. The good part, and the reason this is in my top 7, is the aftermath. Fessy's confused. Caitlin's mouth is wide open in shock. And Rockstar. Oh, Rockstar. She is pissed. Brett just dragged her name through the mud and backed it up by staying, pointing a seemingly big finger at Rockstar being someone that flipped, and she was not happy. It was her daughter's birthday, and she could not believe she just got humiliated by Brett. The shouting begins, and Brett keeps his cool in the face of Rockstar better than anyone I've ever seen, playing his part perfectly and giving us one of the greatest interactions ever seen on the show. It's an easy favorite of mine and lands at the number six spot. Before this, Rockstar came to me. She said, Guess what? I'm gonna flip on this vote. I'm gonna make it a six to five. By a vote of six to five, Winston, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. I cannot, I cannot on my daughter's birthday believe that you would sit there and do some crap like that. Own it. Can't even own it? You are a bold face. I, I disgusting, disgusting. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. You, you, I, I cannot. Then don't. Disgusting. I can't believe on my daughter's birthday that you would drag my name through the mud like this. You're, you are disgusting. So that's cute. That's real cute. That's cute. That's cute. Real cute. Entering the top five, we have a personal favorite of mine. Obviously, it's on the list. It's the week one blindside of Jose and Big Brother 18. Jose somehow had all the power go to his head when he had absolutely no control. Jose thought he had the numbers all week, walking around the house, calling himself the Messiah. It was a sight to see. Nicole was the first HOH, and she nominated Jose and Pauly, with Pauly being the target. All week long, Jose thought he was staying. He was counting down the seconds for Pauly to get evicted. But come eviction night, it seems like the truth was starting to reveal itself to Jose as he started looking like he was understanding the weight of the situation he put himself in. After everyone had voted and Julie came on, it was time. Paulie's looking over at Jose. Jose is shaking, looking at the floor with his hand on his face, and Julie drops the 7-4 to four bomb that sends Jose home. It was just awesome. I do like to keep things somewhat positive around here, but watching the soul just leave Jose as he realized he was a goner was one time I really took joy due to the misfortune of others. One thing to remember here is that in the beginning of Big Brother 18, Pauly was one of the fan favorites and was quite likable. He hadn't done or said anything bad yet and seemed like he could be a better version of his brother Cody. So to see him stay and be a part of the blind side for Jose was so exciting for me to watch back then. There's just something so juicy in watching someone who thinks they're running everything have it all come crashing down. 
So Nicole nominates me. I'm not surprised. She's a snake her season and she's a snake this season. I don't care because in this house, majority rules. And for right now, I'm saying when yeah. it comes to the majority of the house. Yeah. Because I'm I'm like a messiah for the newbies. I only can speak the truth and then have people decide. And what's the truth you're speaking? Scenarios. By a vote of seven to four, Jose, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Up next, number four, we have the original blindside. The OG, you could call it. We have Marcellus being blindsided at the final five in Big Brother 3. During this week, Jason Guy won the HOH comp and chose to nominate Marcellus and Amy. Marcellus then went on to win the Golden Power of Veto, the first ever that allowed Marcellus to take himself off the block. However, Marcellus knew that Amy was the target and would be going home, as he had both Lisa and Danielle's votes to stay. And he didn't want either of them to have to go up in his place, so he made the mogul move by not using the veto. You all know what happens next. Danielle and Jason decide it's smarter to get rid of Marcellus over Amy. So come eviction time, Danielle ties the vote at one to one with Jason coming down to deliver the final blow. He should have used the veto. Damn. And Marcellus' reaction to being blindsided is great. He's in shock and disbelief and he can't even look at anyone else. Then to top it all off, Julie whacks him on the head. Oh boy, do I love that moment. Easily a top five blindside. My sisters, my brothers, my mama, they're sitting at home and they're like, use the veto, fool. <laughs> I'm not going to use it. I don't want you to have to decide between them. I don't want you guys to go through the moment that I went through this week. As harsh and as terrible as it is, you should have used the veto. I'm sorry, but I vote to evict you, Marcellus. Let me just cut in here and make it official. Marcellus, you are now evicted. First of all, Marcellus, I need to do this to you. <laughs> oh, no! Heading into the podium, you know that we've only got the greatest ones left. They're all great blindsides, and some could argue this being even higher, but my number three blindside is Vanessa blindsiding Austin at the final five of Big Brother 17. Very similar situation to the Marcellus blindside, as there were only two people voting and Austin thought he was safe. He had a showman's Liz's vote for sure, and he even felt good about Johnny Mac's vote. Even if there was somehow a tie, Austin knew he had Vanessa's vote to stay, and Steve was as good as gone. Little did he know, though, that he was playing with the Vanessa Russo, who was secretly plotting behind the scenes with Johnny Mac. She and Johnny Mac came to an understanding that they were both in a much better position if there wasn't a showman sitting with them in the final four, so they were ready to blindside Austin and take Steve with them instead. Come eviction night, Austin is feeling confident. So confident, in fact, that he's barefoot for some reason. Liz votes to evict Steve, and when Johnny Mac comes into the diary room, everyone waited in anticipation as he said this. Let's cast your vote to evict. It's time for some blood, people! I vote to evict Austin. So Julie comes back on and announces the tie vote, and now it's time. Vanessa steps up and just drops the hammer on Austin hard. No mercy whatsoever. Blindsided beyond belief. Austin can't believe what just happened to him. He was supposed to be safe. He sat there in disbelief, and I don't think in the history of watching this show, I have ever seen someone sit in the nomination chair for so long after it was announced they were evicted. He's obviously very salty, tells Vanessa that she'll never win, which really just helps her out, but whatever, and he walks onto the stage barefoot. It was just a very satisfying blindside that is sure to always put a smile on my face when I watch it. What's great about the blindside too is that Austin carried his bitterness all throughout the jury phase as well, emphasizing how real this blindside was to him. Just some great stuff. You guys, this is brutal for me. I'm really sorry, but I came here to play a game and it's a game decision. I'm sorry. Austin, I vote to evict you. It's official. Austin, I'm sorry, Ben. You are evicted. Good luck, Austin. This is at all trusting anything Vanessa is saying right now, and it's like pissing me off. Austin, if she had not kicked you out, I think you'd really like her. It was like chewing nails trying to pretend to be Vanessa's best friend. It was tough. But you know what? You could have had me put shoes on when I walk out that stage. It would have made no difference. Yeah, I'm going to be bitter about that. We're now down to the final two. Call it recency bias if you want, but my second favorite blindside of all time is Cody evicting Nicole Franzel at the final three of Big Brother 22. You gotta understand the outside factors that make this blindside so good. First and foremost, it's gotta be said that BB22 is, for me, a very boring season. So to end things off on a bang like this was a really fantastic, long-awaited piece of entertainment that I was starving for after 90 days of that season. 
Secondly, I was not the biggest Nicole Franzel fan up to this point. I enjoyed her on 16 and was happy to see her win 18, but I felt we had a good amount of her and didn't need more. So the fact that she was this close to the end and possibly becoming the first two-time winner of the show was not something I was rooting for exactly. And third, this was the blind side for everyone. Well, I'm sure some people saw it coming, but all throughout that last week, Cody was not reassuring Enzo that he was going to take him and was very quiet about what he was going to do, leading me to believe that if given the chance, Cody was going to remain loyal to Nicole and take her to the end, and I just wasn't excited to see that finale. So, when the final HOH concluded with Cody beating Nicole in part three and it went to commercials, I literally turned off the TV, got in my car, and started driving to my girlfriend's house. I had already been disappointed by the season, and I knew that Cody was going to take Nicole, so I figured whatever. I'll just watch the jury questioning when I get to my destination, but to be safe, I turned on the episode on my phone so I could listen to what was happening while I was driving. Obviously, I was not watching. I don't need to say that. It's a nice drive, and I hear Julie come back on, and she asks Nicole and Enzo to speak to Cody. Nothing out of the ordinary, but when Nicole starts talking and I hear her crying to Cody, it dawns on me that Nicole might get evicted. I immediately pull over into a nearby parking lot so I can watch, and here we are. Nicole pleads to Cody that she would never betray him. Enzo is pleading just as hard that he did everything in this game for Cody, and then the moment comes upon us. Cody stands up, tears in his eyes, and evicts Nicole. He evicts Nicole! I couldn't believe it. I was fist pumping in my car, yelling, laughing, just overall super excited. The season finally did something to make me happy. And Nicole was not happy. She didn't see it coming at all. And that just made it so much better that she had no idea. I was shocked. She was shocked. And watching Enzo's gratitude to Cody after he evicted Nicole made my heart smile immensely. Just the raw emotion displayed by all three members of the final three in that moment is something that we rarely see on the show. And for that reason, along with it just being a beautiful blindside, is why it lands here at my number two spot. Cody, you have been my ride or die since hour one, day one in this house. If I was in your position, I was not. I would not have cut. I will not. Would not cut you. I feel like I played this game from the second we walked in here with the both of you. I I had that same thing with him. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's official, Nicole. You are the last person evicted from the Big Brother house. Yo, you're awesome, yo. Thank you. Thank you, bro. I told you I had you, bro. Thank you, bro. <sighs> you're awesome, yo. All right, we've made it through all the blind sides, but one. You know exactly what's going to be number one. It's Dan blindsiding Shane at the final four of BB14. After Danielle Murphy won the final four HOH in veto, she had literally all of the power that week. She had her showman's Shane safe off the block, who was willing and ready to take the shot at Ian to send him home in fourth place. Sitting next to Ian was Dan, who had other ideas about how things should work. Dan somehow convinces Danielle to take him off the block and put her showman's Shane up in Dan's place so that Dan could take the shot at Ian instead of Shane having to get his hands dirty. And Shane is cool with the plan, as of course Dan, the most trustworthy and not at all ruthless player in the house, would surely keep him. Dan, of course, was hiding his true intentions. He had a final two deal with Ian, and he had a final two deal with Danielle, so the only thing standing in his way to the finals was Shane, so he knew he had to take him out now. Dan had to play extremely careful throughout the week, though, as he was on the block currently, and if Danielle caught wind that he was going to evict Shane, she could very well not take him off and leave him up there. Come time for the veto ceremony and subsequent eviction, Dan had proven to play the week perfectly, and Danielle chose to save Dan and replace him with Shane. Shane, confident as can be, goes and sits next to a stunned Ian. Dan then gives a speech for the ages, tells Danielle to pick her head up, and then sticks the dagger straight into Shane's heart by evicting him. Everyone left is in disbelief. Shane makes a quick and stunned exit. Ian seems like he's about to throw up. Danielle has the most shocked face, realizing that Dan, once again, lied straight to her face and got away with it. And then there's Dan, knowing that he had no other choice but to play as ruthless as possible. It may not have been the greatest reaction from an evicted houseguest who had just gotten blindsided, but this being Dan's final bombshell after a season of incredible theatrics really just made this feel like the grand finale of fireworks on the 4th of July. The story behind it, the build-up to it, and the execution of both the move and Shane will go down as one of the most historic evictions of all time. So without a doubt, my favorite blindside and rightfully earned the gold medal placement. You're not going anywhere. I would never, ever, 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 I swear in my life, put you up if I thought I was losing you. And this is that shot. So Shane, I'm sorry I have to evict you. What? 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 
And there we go. I didn't think I was going to talk so long about some of these, but there were just so many good ones that I couldn't help myself. Hopefully this season we can get a really juicy blindside, but I won't be greedy as this season has already provided a lot for us viewers. If you like the video, consider subscribing. I post every Monday at around 1230 Eastern time with content like this. Also, really, really quick, last week I announced the pronunciation of my name is Ethanamale, but you can call me Ethanimal if you'd like, because that was the original name I had and it rolls off the tongue easier. Sorry for the confusion. But anyways, as always, here's a clip for you on your way out.